You're planning your vacation in Malaga, but you really don't know where to eat and you want to avoid these tourist traps in the center that are overpriced. So I've come up with a list of seven hidden gems, places that you must go a little bit under the radar to drink and eat. And thankfully, I've got a friend from Ireland. This is Colin, how's it going? Welcome back to Malaga. Thanks very much, great to be here. Can't wait for this food tour. So join us on a food and drink tour here in the city of Malaga, the capital of the province of Malaga in Andalusia, Spain. Let's go. We're gonna start this list at a place called Cortijo de Pepe, which is an authentic Spanish Malaguenian tapas bar that is centrally located right off the Plaza de Merced. And yeah, guys, I really like this place because they've got friendly staff. They've got a wide variety of tapas. Some of them are really high quality and you know, they're actually really cheap uh, compared to other places in the center. And if you just wanna get a drink at the bar with your buddies and have a few cheap tapas, or you wanna have a proper meal and sit outside on the tables there, well, you can do both here at this place. One of the good things about this place is that it's basically open all day long. So when other places close down during the hot part of the day, the siesta hour, this place stays open and you'll basically have the whole bar to yourself. So definitely check this place out. Firstly, it's you have to go down a few steps to get into the place. So you're lowered in the street level, which I found very interesting. Secondly, it's quite narrow and there is a balcony above you and it's kind of, you're wondering what the hell is up there. And thirdly, the array of tapas on the counter, it goes on, it's what it seems like for miles, sort of plenty of choice. So this is probably one of the best tapa places that we've been. Absolutely, without doubt. Yeah, you guys, one thing I really like here at the Cortejo de Pepe is the food, the food is very good. There's a wide variety of tapas. Thing I really want to recommend here is try this chorizo. This chorizo is big, juicy. They grill it right here in house. You gotta come here to this place for food. The next place we're heading to on the list is called La Tranca. Now this place is a vintage vermouth bar, super Andalusian. It's kind of in the periphery of the historic center and I just absolutely love this place. I can't recommend it enough. Uh, it's always packed with locals, which is obviously a good sign. It's totally a party atmosphere. I mean, it's literally packed seven days a week. So if I can give you one tip, it's go there in the off hours so you can get a table, you know, maybe from four to six, because after that or before that, it's gonna be a tope, as they say in Spanish. This place isn't your typical Spanish tapas bar. It's more of a bar environment, but there are some things you can order on the menu. And I'm gonna recommend the chorizo and the shrimp skewer that you see here. Three things I really like about this place, La Tranca, is that it's got a great authentic environment, great music, great art all around the place. And most importantly, I don't normally come here for food, but the food is really underrated. You gotta try the shrimp scampi or the shrimp uh, skewer and the chorizo. Mmm. Ma'am, what do you like about this place, Colin? I'd agree, the food is fantastic. Also, the records and the record covers on the walls are really, really interesting, and the staff are fantastic. Yeah, really, really nice staff here for sure. Carrie, what is something you really like about La Tranca? Okay, I like it that it's a traditional bar, and the tables and the style is very, it's like Spain, it's real, real Spain. Spanish. Yes, Spanish. Yes, I like this and decoration, and uh, it's very fast, and uh, the people or the waitress, um, good service. It's, it is good service, yes. Um, and you can uh, eat something like croquetas or, uh, I don't know, uh, tapas but um, it's not very, very nice expensive. Let's head back to the historic center to a place called La Terraza de Valeria. And I didn't even know this place existed and it's really got some amazing views of the port here in Malaga. It's kind of like your go-to place to get drinks and cocktails before you go out and have dinner for the night. Um, it's not the cheapest, but again, I thought it was sort of like a hidden gem. So that's why I'm putting it on this list. Friendly staff, great drinks, and overall great environment. You gotta check this place out. Here we're at the Terrace, La Terraza Valeria, which is a hotel. We're at the rooftop, the fifth floor. And man, this place is truly a hidden gem. It's got some great views of the cathedral, of the mountain in the background, and of course the, po the port. And so Colin, what are some things that uh, really caught your attention? Three things that caught your attention here. Well, number one of the views, as you can see, absolutely amazing and mind blowing actually. Um, number two is the fact that it's, it's kind of, there's no tourists here, no English speakers, so you kind of have the place to yourself. And number three, the decor, I like it. The different colors are very, very nice. You're not really gonna come here, you guys, to get food, but for a drink, for a beer, for a cocktail, this is definitely your place with a nice view. So we got Steven from Florida. Steven, what are some things that you've really liked about Malaga here on your vacation? 
obviously the views, it's totally different than Florida. You have mountains, you have the, the ocean right here, you've got the beautiful architecture everywhere. It's beautiful people. And But there's no sports cars, right? No, no sports cars, but I have plenty of that back home. It's nice right. to have a change. So you've had a good time on your vacation here then? Definitely, most definitely. All right. How do we meet? Just walking on the street and I met this strapping young man. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I just saw you, man. I was like, man, I just want to be friends with this guy from Florida. So here we are. Welcome to Malaga. Thanks, sir. Okay, so I've got Jenny here from New York City. Yes, La Ciudad de Nueva York. Jenny, uh, when you first got here, what are some things that caught your attention about this particular bar? The views. You see the Puerto de Malaga, the beautiful sky, and it's just overall chill vibes. Me encanta Malaga, la gente, la cultura, um, and obviously la playa. Okay. <laughs> and uh, you went to Pedre Galejo the other day and tried some... Pescaditos. And uh, espetos? Sí, espetos. All right. Awesome. Well... Soy malagueño. Soy malagueño. Soy malagueño aquí. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jenny. Muchas gracias. Now let's go to a neighborhood called Soho, not too far from where we just were, to a place called La Fabrica, a place that my girlfriend discovered. And something I really like about this place is it's an actual brewery. They brew the beer there. There's a wide variety of beers and not all of them are that expensive. And you know, I'm from Wisconsin, so we are the land of breweries. So I just could not leave this place off the list. It felt like home for me. You guys, we're here at La Fabrica. This is like a big brewery that you would see in Wisconsin in the United States. Really a nice place. It totally caught me off guard. Colin, what are your thoughts on this place? Man, it's amazing. Like, number one, there's a live DJ playing, you know, for us, which is fantastic. Number two, there's massive barrels of beer behind us, which you can see when you come in. And number three, it's a massive open space, so it's very airy and great atmosphere. And it's not expensive at all. No, 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 no. It's great prices. You know, it looks expensive, but it's not at all. It's fantastic. Being from the United States, what's something that catches your attention about this place? Oh, definitely the big old brewery behind me. This is like home. You got some of these in Florida? Yeah, we have a couple of them. Well, what do you think about the prices, though? Oh, half the price and definitely good, good beer. All right, so are you going to invite me to Clearwater, Florida, then take me out on the boat? Oh, definitely. I have free place to stay anytime. All right, man. See you there. We're going to end this list at my absolute favorite place to eat and drink in Malaga, and that is Las Marchanas, which is the Catholic-themed Holy Week or Semana Santa bar. But don't let that scare you guys. This is about as Malaguean as it can get, and the staff are super inviting and friendly. The food is huge, plentiful, delicious, and very fairly priced. I never leave this place hungry or thirsty. I just cannot say enough about this place. I keep coming back. I love it, and I always invite my friends here. You just never leave disappointed. Definitely come to Las Marchanas. What kind of impression does this place get you? It's pretty traditional, pretty original, right? It is very original. Like I said, I was here six years ago, which is crazy. I think it's very, you know, authentic. It kind of gives like Prohibition era vibes, you know? Really? Yeah. Maybe. It's quite crowded, you know, there's lots of statues staring at you. There's a Virgin Mary look at me right here, <laughs> you know? Um, it's a little bit off-putting, but it's such a good vibe. It's warm inside. It's always super busy. So yeah, very nice. If it's busy, that's usually a good thing, you know? Absolutely, you know, and again, not a lot of tourists, very lots of Spanish being spoken, which I love. ¿Qué te llama la atención de las marchanas cuando vengas acá? Lo más obvio y lógico es la decoración de las marchanas, que recuerda a la Semana Santa, que es, eh, da una sensación de vivir en la Semana Santa todo el año. Entonces puedes verlo y puedes sentirlo. Lo otro es que es muy tradicional, la comida es muy rica, las tapas son grandes y es barato. Muy bien. This next place is probably my favorite informal place to get drinks, and that is La Antigua Casa Guardiana in Malaga. This place is super old and rustic, and I'll be honest, it has sort of a strange stench, but I don't know, it really transports you back in time, makes you think of all the people that used to get drunk together in the 1800s and the early 1900s and thereafter. It's a great place to get that one euro 50 cent shot glasses of vermouth, which is really like a sweet wine that takes a little bit of time to grow on you, but once it does, you end up just loving it, but you do gotta be careful. 
Two or three of these can get you drunk really quickly if you're not careful. For some reason, I always end up meeting like middle-aged to older folk here and we just have great conversations, people from all over the world. You know, it's really centrally located and it's obviously very popular already. And my buddy Colin from Ireland, well, it's definitely his favorite place to get drinks in Malaga and it's one of mine. So definitely check this place out. The next place we're gonna go is to the east of the historic center, about a 30 minute walk or a five to 10 minute bus ride or taxi ride to a place called El Merlot. I think it's a good idea to get outside the city center because I think this place has more of a local feel. It's more relaxing, a little bit quieter, and of course the prices are cheaper here and you can get some of the best fried fish in all of Spain at these restaurants called Chiringuitos, which are these really nice seaside restaurants that you see here. So if you're into seafood and everything like that and you wanna save a little bit of money but get just as good a quality, it's a must that you come to a place like this. And if you don't like this particular place, there's a handful to choose from in this area called El Pedregalejo or El Palo. Now, of course, you can get pescaito frito, fried fish or seafood in the center of Malaga, but I really want you guys to avoid those tourist traps, get better prices and get more of an authentic feel. So that's why I chose El Merlot and Pedregalejo. Also, shout out to Travel Addict Guy and Catman for assisting me with this footage. I miss you guys. Oh, yeah. You guys, and for the honorable mention, I want to give El Pimpi Antonio Banderas restaurant and bar a big shout out. Now, when you come to Malaga, this is already well known. It's really easy to see if you're in the center area by the Roman ruins, by the El Casaba, in the center in general. And it's got like two little bars, a big restaurant, and it's got an outdoor terrace where we are right now. And I just happened to run into a coworker, an authentic Spanish girl from Cordoba. And you know, she has some good opinions, so I'm curious. Lola, se llama Lola, ¿cómo estás? Hola, Elio, ¿qué tal? Muy bien, ¿y tú? Muy bien. <laughs> um, ¿Qué te llama la atención del Pimpi, del restaurante del Pimpi? ¿Qué te llama la atención cuando estés aquí? Bueno, lo que más me llama la atención es la comida del Pimpi. Es súper típica. Aquí en Málaga podemos pedir, por ejemplo, unos mejillones o una ensaladilla rusa que es exquisita. Vale. Me llama la atención también el ambiente y sobre todo el compartir el tiempo con mis amigos. Sí, sí, sí. Estamos con otros compañeros de mi trabajo. Juanito y Ángela, los dos son... So, los dos son españoles, muy amables. Pero nada, Lola, también tengo otras preguntas. ¿Qué más te gusta del Pimpi? ¿Te gusta el rollo, el ambiente? Me gusta mucho el rollo. Vale. El buen rollo que hay. O sea, aquí eh, puedes pasar un rato entretenido, divertido, súper agradable, en buena compañía y, y además en un sitio precioso en el centro de Málaga. Muy bien. Muchas gracias, Lola. Valoramos mucho tu opinión como española, ¿vale? Muchas gracias. Que tengas una buena noche. Igualmente. Adiós. Adiós, cariño. Well, I hope you guys liked that video of seven must visit under the radar eat and drink places here in Malaga. And, you know, I got to be honest, I, I usually don't do videos like that. I stick to adventure, travel, history, the Spanish language, meeting people, going out into places where other people don't go. Um, but my friend Colin from Ireland, he really brought that to my attention. He said, you know what, Ellie, that would be a good idea. And so now that I've been living in Malaga, I agree. You know, those are places that we as tourists, as visitors, as foreigners, we want to know when we come here. And so that's why we did it. So big thanks to Colin. Also, thanks to Jenny from New York. I randomly met that girl um, when I was uh, climbing the castle with some friends. And of course, my lovely girlfriend, Carrie. I also want to give a special shout out to a guy named Manuel from Logroño, Rioja, up in northern Spain. I got home the other day and I found these t-shirts in the mail. He uh, printed them for me. They say my name, Adventure Alley, with the mountain emblem. And so thanks, Manuel. I'll be seeing you up in Spain. We're going to be making a video up there, hopefully in June. So stay tuned for that. And you guys, this is just really a testament to the community that we formed here on this channel. About a year ago, I was right at a thousand subscribers. I just got monetized. That was a big stepping stone. And now we're at 10,000 and you know, the sky's the limit. I really think we got something good going here and moving forward, you guys, I do want to keep doing tons of content in Spain, adventure style content, hiking, uh, culture, but you guys long term, I really have a dream to go back to the Americas and document the Spanish speaking world in the Americas, the Caribbean, Central and South America. And I just want to make that link between Spain and the Americas clear and the, the historical connection 
the cultural connection is so much bigger than we realize, but I want to do so using the English language so people in the Anglosphere can really understand what's going on because, you know, this has sort of became my life pursuit and passion and it's something that I didn't expect to happen. But as a result of learning the Spanish language, it has happened and it's continuing to happen. So yeah, guys, let's do this together. I also want to mention my Patreons, Ken, Chris, and Phil. Thank you guys for supporting me. I do have a Patreon. You can always see it in the description of my videos, and that's a great way to look into what I'm doing. I offer more details um, into my channel and into my life, so check that out if you want to find ways to support me further. So yeah, you guys, uh, I guess we'll see you soon in another upcoming video. Until the next video, Adventure Elliot, peacing out. Hasta luego.